Hi everyone, Bob is here with another video. Today I'm going to talk about rotator cuff and how can we use resistance band to progress your routine. I've shown you initially a series of exercises that you can start your rehab with isometric and active range of motion. And in this video, we're going to progress those exercises. If you're suffering from rotator cuff injury, this video can be a great help for you to start your recovery and start to get better and improve your strength and mobility. If you've never been in this channel, my name is Bob, I'm a physical therapist and the purpose of this channel is to help people like yourself with the simple tips and exercises to start their recovery and get better. Make sure to like, share and subscribe our channel for our weekly updates. The shoulder joint classifies as a ball and socket joint. However, the joint sacrifices stability for mobility. The primary biomechanical rule of the rotator cuff is to stabilize the shoulder joint by compressing the humeral head against the glenoid. Rotator cuff injuries is a common condition between active individuals. However, one of the main risk factors for this injury can be age. Research has shown rotator cuff injury can be around 9.7% in patients who are in their 20s or younger and it can increase up to 62% in patients who is in their 60s or older. Study highlighted, after age of 66, there is a 50% likelihood of bilateral tear in their board shoulder. Subscapularis muscle attaches underneath of the scapula and the tendon pass by underneath of crocoid process and attaches to the lesser tuberosity of the humerus. Subscapularis is an internal rotator of the shoulder and it does help stabilizing the shoulder joint. If you move on to the other side of the scapula, the top part of the scapula will be filled up with supraspinatus muscle. The muscle tendon passes by underneath of acromion and attaches to the greater tuberosity of the humerus. The function of this muscle is abduction and at the same time is the shoulder stabilizer. Infraspinatus muscle is a strong muscle which is originated from infraspinatus fossa on the native scapular spine and is attached to greater tuberosity. Its primary function is lateral rotation of the arms and stabilization of the shoulder. The last rotator cuff muscle is teres minor which is originated from a lateral border of the scapula and is attached to the greater tuberosity of the shoulder. The primary function of teres minor is lateral rotation and stabilization of the shoulder joint. This is the list of rotator cuff in our shoulder joint. Alright guys, I'm going to start this routine with a couple of exercises that can help you to literally strengthen your rotator cuff with resistant band. At the end of this video, I'm going to share with you a couple of tips that you should have to follow for optimum results. Now, the first exercise is going to be external rotation with the resistant band. Now, you can um, pretty much pick up the color that you like and the strength that you like that suits you and use the door basically handle and um, try this exercise. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you from different angles and you can give it a try. We want to use this resistant band above your knuckles to keep your hands comfortable. And the movement that we want to simulate is going to be external rotation, which is going to be hands next to your body and you want to external rotate your arms. We assume this is the side that is actually sore and you want to get that basically 15, 20 degrees of external rotation. As you can see, I try to keep my elbows close to my body and try to do this movement as slow as possible. You don't want to rush it. You want to keep that one, two, three tension in each way. Two and three, one, two and three. I try to maintain that tension through the movement. It's not a very jerky movement. And you can practice the first exercise with that. Now, you could use something like a towel between your arms, which can give you a little bit more stability. I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can use something like as small as that, basically hold it on next to your body and use the same band. This literally give you a chance to 
hold on your elbow and not be able to take it off, off your body. Now, I'm gonna show you one more round. Keep the back nice and tall. You wanna move the elbow slow and control. If you need to get more strength, you can move your body or get it closer to the resistance band to maintain that tension. You don't want to have a loose tension. Slow control back. And as you can see, I'll try to control that tension all the way through. Now, you're gonna try all the exercise in this routine. Start them from three sets of eight to 12. And whenever you find 12 is comfortable, you can progress them to 15. All right, guys, the next move that we're going to go through, it's gonna be um, basically front raise. And the front raise movement, it's, um, it's a very simple, but very effective when you're suffering from a rotator cuff injury. Now, uh, you need to get a kind of like a, a good length of resistance band, and you can kind of like hook it up with your foot. And what we're trying to achieve is that uh, you want to literally um, um, simulate this movement that I'm gonna show you here. Now, uh, Put the resistant man above your knuckle, simple and tight. What we're trying to do, if you look at the movement of a front raise, this is basically front raise. And usually people want to try this movement. Now, what I want to try and show you is that, that we don't want to really go in that plane of movements. We want to create a kind of scaption movement, which means it's towards, slightly towards the lateral movement. It's not here, it's not here either. It basically between those two movements. We want to slowly, again, same three tempo movement, two and three, and your thumb can be up as a way that actually you create that movement. Slow control, slow back again. One, two, and three. You can even hold it for a second at the top. Back again, two and three. As you can see, I don't go all the way down to lose the tension. That's very important for you to follow these exercises through the tension. We're gonna try the same movement for three sets of eight to 12 initially. Slowly progress it to 15 whenever you find the 12 is easy. We're gonna move on to the next exercise, which is a pull apart exercise. And I'm gonna show you how to do it and you can give it a try. You want to create a, some sort of like a, um, um, between your two arms, you wanna basically have the resistance band and you want to keep the resistance band above your knuckles and you wanna wrap it to the point that you feel the tension, which means as you pull, you actually can feel the tension straight away. It shouldn't be up to here and then you feel the tension. It should be basically balanced. Now, what we're trying to do, we're trying to do this movement, which we call it pull apart, which means you're pulling your two part, your hands um, away from each other and you're holding them for, for a second, slow control back. Same three tempo movement, one, two, and three. Hold it there at the end range and slow back. As you can see, I start this exercise from this level, which means below my belly bottom, and slowly, whenever I felt comfortable, I slowly bring this movement a little bit higher. Hold it there, slow, one, two, and three two and three, slow control back and three. Now, where do you feel this muscle um, that actually works is between your shoulder plate at the back, is underneath of your shoulder plate. Um, I'm gonna show you a, a progression whenever you felt comfortable that the level, it's fine. You can slowly bring the shoulder and your arms up. And don't necessarily try to try this exercise on the area that it doesn't feel comfortable. And if you do it slower, it's better. You feel the muscle that works and actually that's what you need. Control, coordination, and that tension. Slow back and control. You're gonna try it for three sets of 12, progress it to 15 whenever you feel it easy. The next exercise that I'm going to show you guys is gonna be pullbacks and um, it's a very effective exercise in acute and basically on um, progression movements, which means you can use this exercise in even acute um, stage of your injury. We need to create it like a hook basically and you put this at the top of the door, whatever you find, it's easy, that works for you. Um, but it should be something that it hooked up because you're gonna pull back. Now, I'm gonna show you the exercise from the side that you can see it and you can give it a try. Um, wrap the resistance band above your knuckles and as you can see, by this stage, I already feel the tension. But as you go lower, I can feel more. Now, the movement is gonna be basically a pull back movement, which means you're trying to create that pulling back movement of the resistance band. Now, if I go more back towards 
um, away from the door, it become more challenging because I try to get more tension from the resistant band. Now, what I wanted to practice is not to just doing it, slow tempo, get the shoulder up, like arms up to the shoulder level, slow and control, and back again. Slow control, one, two, and three. And at the end range, you wanna hold it for a second. I can feel back of my basically shoulder works, my triceps works, but you don't want to do it quickly. Slow and control, all the way up. And hold at the end range. I'm gonna go a little bit more back that way to show you easier. Two and three. Two and three. Two and three. Hold it at the end range for a second. As you can see, I try to stabilize my body and just move my arms. Now, these exercises, guys, can be done in a daily basis. And one of the most important things that I'm gonna share with you now is three tips that you should follow while you're following this routine. To get better quicker, you have to follow these three tips. The first thing is consistency, which means you have to be consistent with your routine and you can't really follow this every now and then for getting better. Now, in some stages, you might feel better, but I would really suggest my patient to, until that you feel 100% with your arms, you have to follow these exercises. Now, you might find this exercise a little bit easy. You are always um, have some ways to actually um, progress them, and that's something that we do help you with. Send me a message and tell me how can I progress it, and I'll show you how to step up and progress your routine. Now, the second tip is that your length of resistant band. It's very important that to get the right length and when you're buying this resistant band. Like literally, if your resistant band is too loose and you get it and um, basically pull apart or doing this exercise easily, that's not gonna be necessarily help you initially to get progress and get better, which means the length of your resistant band is important. Get um, three different colors and try to work around the range that works for you. And the last tip that I would like to share with you is that make sure that if you are following these exercises, and you try in certain movement and that movement doesn't feel comfortable. And most um, simple one and, and common one is actually uh, the front raise, for example. Most of my patients try to do the front raise all the way up and very quick. Now, what I try to explain to them is that front raise is a, is a movement that might actually create some sort of tension and pain on your shoulder. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? In most cases, pain is normal while you're doing your rehabilitation, but you don't want to poke your arms and try to cre kind of, uh, create that movement that actually bothers your pain, which means go through the range that it feels comfortable, don't go all the way up, and don't overstretch it. And go to the, through the range that it feels comfortable and slowly bring it up and try to progress it, which means if certain exercise doesn't feel 100%, don't poke them. I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you have any question, make sure to leave me a comment and I get back to you. If you need further help, we have an online consultation that if you visit our website that you can book your consultation with me no matter where you are in the world and I would be happy to help you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for our weekly update. Until next week, all the best.